As we go along a curve, we know that our T and B frame is changing, right? So T, N, and B are changing as we go along the curve. So we might want to look at just what are the patterns in those changes. The first one to look at is dt, dS. How does the unit tangent change as you move along the curve? And we know that um, every vector, right, dt, dS is a vector. Every vector has a direction and a magnitude. Now, the direction of dt, dS, this is the way the unit tangent is changing, and that's actually the direction of the unit normal, right? So we know its direction, and that's a unit vector. We just need to multiply it by its length. But we recognize that the length of dt, dS is what we called kappa. Okay, so um, dt, dS is in the direction of n, and it has length kappa. By the way, um, now might be a good time to derive another formula for kappa. It can, it's going to come from our um, acceleration formula. We know that the acceleration had a tangential component, a component in the direction of the unit tangent, and that it had a, a normal component, a, no, a, direct, a component in the direction of the unit normal. Now, if we take, um, if we look at the velocity, we knew the velocity had a direction. It's in the direction of the unit tangent, and it has a length, which is the speed. So if we look at a cross v, what we get is, um, if we use our representation here in terms of uh, tangential and normal ex acceleration, then we have this cross product. Now, <clears throat> this cross product is distributive, so we get a t cross um, length v t um, plus a sub n times n cross speed t. Um, and when you have a scalar, those scalars come through with the cross product, so we get t cross t. This is a scalar, that's a scalar, so those come through, so we have a sub n a sub n v, sorry, a sub n speed, because it's the length of v, n cross t. Ah, okay, we're getting somewhere now. t cross t, because those two vectors are point in the same direction, their cross product is zero. The parallelogram that they create has no area, so the length of the result is zero. So this cross product is zero, so that part disappears. Now n cross t, that's, um, that's the opposite direction of t cross n, which is b, right? So this is equal to a sub n times v times um, t cross n would be in the direct, it would be actually negative b, right? Or n cross t, sorry, is in the opposite of t cross n, and t cross n is b, so that's why this is negative b. So if we, we, um, we recall now that a sub n was actually equal to the curvature times the speed squared, we have here um, that a cross v is equal to kappa speed squared times the speed would make kappa v cubed, so times negative b. Now, if we're interested in finding kappa, we don't really care about the direction of either of these, so let's just look at the lengths of these. We have a cross v. The length of a cross v is equal to um, kappa is always positive, and then we have this is a positive number, and then the length of negative b is 1, so that disappears. So we get this formula that's kind of handy for calculating kappa. It's the length of a, a cross v or v cross a, either way, divided by the speed cubed.